Welcome to Northwoods Angling. It's a cook-off. Luke, <laughs> Peter, we're both each gonna cook channel catfish two ways. Catch and cook, Northwoods Angling. Jacob's gonna be the judge, stick with us. I don't even think we need to mark it. There's a big 40 foot hole right here. And then what happens is there's a seam off of this tree right here. And I think we're just gonna anchor right in the seam and get right back on this. So we, yeah. we filmed the Channel Cat episode here before in the early spring, right when the water was perfect. So this is the spot. All right, I think, uh, I think we're good, Captain. Just gonna clip this five ounce around here. Bait it up, a nice big old head, hooked right through the head. There we go, channel cat candy. Chuck it out right on the seam, right as this pleasure boat that was a great passes. Let's do this. So Luke is gonna blacken it, I hear. I mean, I brought everything, so okay. <laughs> he's at the mercy of my spices. I basically gave him the grossest spices <laughs> that I had in my cupboard and I just threw them together. No, I, I threw something together. I mean, I'm a chef. Well, I guess Peter's a chef now, so I guess I, I don't have a chance. I cook a lot. I'm pretty much the cook in my household, so. I put something together real nice for him to blacken his fish with. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fry my fish. I'm gonna show you though from when we actually fillet the fish, we're gonna put it in some buttermilk, we're gonna soak it, a little bit of hot sauce, and then we're gonna go ahead and bread it and fry it right over the open fire. So that's my tactic. First spot did not pan out. We are gonna go up the Minnesota now, back kind of towards where we started today. We're gonna find ourselves a fish so we can do a little cooking on the shore. It's been a couple hours. We we're getting pretty discouraged that we weren't gonna be able to eat tonight, but I think this might be the one. What do you guys think? This is the new Tomcat TC2. It's a medium heavy rod, so it's a little lighter action. We're testing it out for channel cats and sturgeon. And I like the looks of it. I like the feel of it. Is this a flathead? Yeah, it just fully loaded the rod up. It's got some power. Let me switch directions here. Hopefully it's target species though. Oh, it's a massive channel or it's a flat. I don't know. <laughs> it look, if it's a channel, it's huge. I can't see the bugs are so bad. <laughs> There's a debate right now whether we're gonna eat this. We're not eating this fish. It's a big fish. It has a massive head. Let's see if I can do this properly, but I mean, check out that beast. Come out to get a little dinner. This would be like a meal for four. Yeah, so the big thing is guys, um, fish this big, we're gonna put back. It's all about selective harvest. And if you're going to eat a fish, make sure it's those smaller to medium sized fish. This is a big old channel cat. Probably wouldn't taste the best. And I can't get this hook out. 
I got it. One, two, three. <laughs> Try again. There it is. So. You done? One more. That's a good channel. It's got a lot of a lot of bugs on it too. Down on the bottom. But yeah, we're gonna put this fish back. Hope for a smaller one so we can have some dinner. Oh he's just okay, ready. get my bait back out. That was on a live creek trip. So try another one. I have a good feeling we're gonna get one here pretty quick. Bugs are starting to congregate, guys. We're just, come to me, they're coming. Oh my gosh, oh. This, okay, we'll be back. All right, so what I did here, we actually had a weird night. We caught an overfish. We caught a really big channel cat, and so we weren't able to keep it and fillet it up and uh, you know, do our catch and cook. So we decided to just come cook the rest of the stuff we had. I had some uh, items for some hash. So what I did is I took some parboiled potatoes, which is half boiled, um, cut up into little, you know, diced potatoes, uh, peppers, onions, garlic. Uh, I first put bacon in the pan, um, got nice and uh, oiled up. <clears throat> then put the potatoes and onions and the peppers, made uh, kind of a hash. Then put some mushrooms in, and then what I did uh, was I put some wild rice. It's a staple of Minnesota. Uh, it's what we're, you know, Northwoods angling. We're up here in the North Country, so use some wild rice, and we got some hash cooking. So we're gonna fillet this uh, this fish up that we got, and <laughs> just caught a channel cat at the spot that we launched. Go figure. We just went and ran what 12 miles downstream. Yep. Luke's ready to go. We got this fish. Just uh, throwing some lines out in the back of the boat while we're uh, cooking this hash. This is a perfect eater size, guys. This is a selective harvest fish. This is a perfect two and a half pounder. It literally doesn't get any better than that for eating. Absolutely perfect. We showed you earlier why you don't want to keep the big ones to eat. You know, those are too big. I'll wash this fish off and then we're going to get her filleted. We're going to get her in the pan. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed this fish out. It's good to do that because it keeps the meat nice and clean for you instead of super bloody. So I'm gonna take this knife. Actually, there's a vein that runs down right through the tail. You see that squirting out there, the blood squirting out? That's good because you wanna get that blood out of the fish. I'm gonna just put it over by the water so we don't get it all bloody. And you can see it's all squirting out there. That is awesome. That's a really good way to do that. I usually, you know, cut them right there, but it's, you know, this is a nice new way to do it. Luke, thanks for that tip. I'm gonna wash these off with nice, fresh, clean water instead of the river water. Just adds to the taste and makes it a little bit better. Nice cold water. Take one, put it in the bath. Whoops. <laughs> put it in the bath. <laughs> Put it on the riverbank. Put it in the bath. All right, so like I said before, we made this hash already. Um, this is a specialty with my fried fish. I'm gonna take a little seasoning here and I'm gonna dump it in my breading mixture. Uh, not all of it, I save a little bit for extra, but just mix it around there. Shake it up a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and put those catfish fillets in this bag after soaking in the buttermilk. And that'll get them nice and tenderized a little bit. It'll put a little coating on them so this breading will stick to it. Then right into the oil they go. Uh, and then we're in for a treat, big treat. All right, I think we're good to fry. The oil's nice and hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and dredge these. That's what you call it when you take it from the liquid over to the breading mix. It's called dredging. Now dredge this fish, throw it right in. Oh yeah, this is gonna be real, real tasty. I love catfish fried, it's one of my favorite fried fish. Jacob, you're in for a treat. You've never had catfish before. This is uh, gonna be real good. One thing I do though with these, 
Luke may not like this because he's on the low carb diet. I take them. Double batter. Double, double them up. It gets a little bit more on there and we got a little bit to spare because we were planning on maybe four or five fillets and we have two. So we're not doing it two ways. We're not gonna do the blacken just because we only have two fillets here. I'll take this and we're not hot enough. If the oil's not hot enough, which is what just happened to us, we're, we're at a real, you know, we're just kind of improving at this point, but um, oil's not hot enough. It's 11.45 at night, so catch and cook completely failed, but it's starting to heat up a little bit. If the oil does not get hot enough, the oil just soaks into the breading and doesn't, uh, you get that super hot oil, it actually resists the breading and just fries it. So you don't want it to soak in, but it looks like it's starting to do its job there. Uh, this oil heats up really quick under a fire, so it's, it's going pretty good now. I think I'm gonna throw the other one in. But when one goes in, it'll cool down the pan a little bit, and so it'll actually make it not, uh, not fry as good. But using cast iron is super important because when you use cast iron, it conducts heat very, very well and it keeps the heat in the pan where you want it. Those cheap, cheap pans don't really do good for frying. That's why I usually burn the fish or whatever you're frying before uh, you, know, you actually get it nice and done and perfectly golden brown. Double breaded this again. I threw it in the dredge uh, from the buttermilk mixture then back into the buttermilk mixture and back into the breading mix. All right, I'm gonna get washed up and I'm gonna flip this other one. try my first channel cat ever. Peter said he screwed up cooking it, but I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. It ended up all right. A lot of the batter didn't stick to it, but most I of it did. I don't love fish. I will tell you that much. Like fishy stuff, I don't love it. So. It's not fishy at all. Oh, dude. It's, there's no fish. That's awesome. I love it. I always like channel cat though. It's great. It's flaky, it kind of melts in your mouth. It tastes better than walleye. It's a little bit firmer. It's not as flaky as some white fish like walleye, but I kind of like a little bit more texture to the fish. It's good. It just, you know. Well, hopefully you learned something tonight. I think it's time for us to chow down get out of here. I got to work in the morning. Peter's got to work in the morning. Luke's got to work in the morning. It's midnight. It's midnight. Work night. We're going to eat the rest of this. Remember, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. And we'll see you next time. So we quickly set up. We got a wide variety of bait. No, we don't. We have two baits. It's sucker minnow and chubs. I got a chub on. I just got a <laughs> Redo the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Redo the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> creek chubs. Freshly caught creek chubs.